Hello dear listener please subscribe to our channel enjoy watching. The evening had draped its velvet cloak over the world outside my window. A silent witness to the moment my life would pivot on an axis of betrayal. Our home. Once a sanctuary of love and laughter. Now felt like an elaborate stage set for the unraveling of a meticulously kept secret. It was on this fateful night. Under the watchful gaze of the moon. That an unassuming envelope found its way into the trembling sanctuary of my hands. As I sat in the dimly lit study. The soft glow of the desk lamp casting long shadows across the room. The letter seemed almost benign in its physical form. Yet. The weight of its contents pressed down upon me with an unbearable heaviness. As if the very air around me had thickened with foreboding. The sender had chosen anonymity. A coward's cloak. Leaving me to face the storm alone. With a deep, steadying breath, I broke the seal, the sound unnervingly loud in the silence that enveloped me. The words leaped out, stark against the white of the paper, each sentence a dagger to the heart. Vivian, my wife, my partner in life's dance, had been entangled in the arms of another. The details were sparing, yet the message was clear as day. Her heart, or at least a part of it, had not been mine for years. Betrayal, a concept once foreign and abstract, had taken up residence in the very core of my being. It coursed through me, a relentless tide that threatened to erode the foundation of trust upon which our marriage stood. The room, with its familiar comforts, suddenly felt alien, each object a reminder of the lies that had infested our home. In the hours that followed, I was a prisoner of my own mind. A tumultuous sea of emotions that ebbed and flowed with merciless unpredictability. Anger. Disbelief. Sorrow. And a profound sense of loss waged war within me. Each vying for dominance. Yet, beneath the cacophony of feelings, a cold clarity began to emerge. The path forward, though fraught with pain and uncertainty, was illuminated by a newfound resolve. The night waned, giving way to the first light of dawn. A symbolic end to the life I had known. The decision to confront the betrayal, to reclaim control of my narrative, was a silent vow made in the solitude of my study. The letter, once a harbinger of despair, had become the catalyst for a transformation. The journey ahead would be fraught with challenges, but I was resolute. The unveiling of Vivian's affair was not just an end, but a beginning, the first step on a path toward retribution in Ultimately, renewal. With the dawn ushering in a new day, the world outside remained blissfully unaware of the seismic shift that had occurred within the confines of my heart. The sun's rays, sneaking past the curtains, played upon the surfaces of our home, highlighting the stark contrast between the light of day and the darkness that had taken root within me. This was the day I embarked on a path of retaliation. A meticulously planned course of action born from the ashes of my shattered trust. The initial shock of discovery had given way to a calculated coldness. A strategic mindset that approached the situation with the precision of a chess master. My emotions, though still simmering beneath the surface, were now harnessed to fuel my resolve. Vivian, the woman I had pledged my life to, would come to understand the depth of her betrayal. Not through accusations or confrontations, but through a carefully orchestrated unveiling of her deceit. I retreated into the solitude of my study once more. Not as a victim of circumstance, but as the architect of my own destiny. The room, with its leather-bound books and the faint scent of cedar, transformed into a war room of sorts. Here, amidst the relics of our shared life, I plotted the course of my vengeance. The divorce papers. Once an abstract concept, now took form, their impending delivery a silent missile aimed directly at the facade Vivian had so skillfully maintained. The element of surprise was my ally, a weapon to be wielded with precision and care. Vivian, ensconced in her world of legal battles and courtroom victories, would not see it coming. Her public persona, a mask of invulnerability, would crack under the weight of personal scandal. The timing, the place, every detail was considered with the meticulousness of a general planning a decisive battle. The decision to serve her the divorce papers at her workplace was not made lightly. 
it was a calculated move. Designed to strike at the heart of her pride and professional image. The public nature of the act would serve as a mirror, reflecting the humiliation and pain she had inflicted upon me. Yet, it was more than mere retribution. It was a declaration of my emancipation from the web of lies that had ensnared us. As the plan solidified, a sense of empowerment began to take root. The path ahead was fraught with uncertainty, yet the clarity of my purpose provided a beacon of light in the darkness. The act of retaliation, while born from the ashes of betrayal, was not an end in itself, but a necessary step toward reclaiming my autonomy and reshaping my destiny. In the silent chambers of my heart, a vow was made. The unveiling of Vivian's affair would be met with a retaliation that would echo in the annals of our lives. A testament to the strength born from brokenness. As dawn broke over the city, casting a golden glow upon the steel and glass monuments to human achievement, the stage was set for Vivian's fall from grace. The world, unbeknownst to the drama that was about to unfold, carried on in its usual rhythm. A stark contrast to the storm brewing within the walls of one of its most esteemed law firms. Here, in this bastion of justice and power, Vivian had built her empire, her reputation unassailable, or so it seemed. I had chosen this day with deliberate intent, a day like any other yet marked for infamy in the hidden calendar of our lives. The air was crisp, the sky a clear blue nature itself seemingly in conspiracy to underscore the drama with an ordinary beauty. My heart, a battleground of conflicting emotions, was strangely calm as I set the plan into motion. The delivery of the divorce papers was not just a legal procedure, it was a theatrical coup. The opening act of Vivian's public unraveling. The messenger, unaware of the significance of the documents in his satchel, made his way through the labyrinth of sleek corridors past the watchful eyes of ambition and success. Vivian, ensconced in her office, a temple to her achievements, was in the midst of her daily conquests when the knock came. The moment was upon us, a fracture in time that would divide her life into before and after. As the papers were delivered into her hands, the air around seemed to still, a momentary pause in the fabric of reality. Her reaction, though hidden from my view, played out in my mind's theater with vivid clarity. The initial shock, the flash of confusion, followed by the dawning realization of the implications. The walls of her office, once symbols of her ascendancy, now bore witness to her fall. The sanctity of her professional realm, violated by the personal, her carefully constructed world beginning to crumble. The news of the divorce, served in such a spectacularly public manner, spread like wildfire. Whispers turned into conversations, conversations into speculation, the halls of power echoing with the tale of Vivian's fall. Her humiliation was complete, a spectacle for the masses, her pain and anger the subject of office gossip and speculation. The woman who had navigated the treacherous waters of legal battles with grace and cunning was now adrift in a sea of scrutiny and judgment. Yet, Beneath the surface of this public spectacle, a more profound drama unfolded. Vivian, stripped of her armor of invulnerability, was forced to confront the consequences of her actions. The facade of her perfect life, meticulously maintained, had been shattered, leaving her exposed to the judgment of her peers and the censure of her own conscience. This was her fall, not just from grace, but from the illusion of control she had so skillfully crafted. It was a fall into the realms of vulnerability and introspection, a journey from the heights of success to the depths of self-discovery. The delivery of the divorce papers, a moment of profound humiliation, marked the beginning of his descent, a pivotal point in the unraveling of Vivian's life. As the day wore on, and the reality of her situation took root, Vivian stood at the precipice of change, the world she knew receding into the distance the path ahead uncertain yet inevitable. The day of the confrontation arrived with the inevitability of a storm long foretold, its dark clouds gathering on the horizon of our lives, promising a deluge that would wash away the remnants of a facade too long maintained. The setting for this final act was not chosen lightly, it was to be public, a stage where the masks would fall and truths, long hidden in the shadows, 
would be illuminated under the unforgiving spotlight of reality. The air was electric with anticipation as I approached Vivian, the bearer of my once undivided affection, now the architect of my torment. The public square, usually a place of transient passers-by and fleeting moments, transformed into an arena of reckoning. The murmurs of the crowd, the rustle of leaves and the gentle breeze, all seemed to fall silent, as if nature itself held its breath for the words that would break the dam of restraint. Vivian, regal even in her moment of exposure, stood amidst the ruins of her carefully constructed world. Her eyes, once the windows to a soul I thought I knew, now mirrored the storm that raged within both of us. The confrontation, though personal, was not ours alone, it was a spectacle. A morality play enacted for the edification of an unseen audience, eager for the drama of downfall and redemption. With a voice that carried the weight of betrayed love and shattered trust, one spoke of her infidelity, not as an accusation, but as a declaration of emancipation. The words, each chosen for their precision and clarity, were not just a recounting of her transgressions but a testament to the end of an illusion. Vivian's reaction was a dance of defiance and vulnerability, a performance honed in the courtrooms but never before tested in the court of public opinion. The exchange between us, heated and charged with the electricity of raw emotion, was a catharsis. I unveiled my plans for the divorce, not as a threat, but as a statement of fact, a line drawn in the sand from which there was no retreat. The financial decisions, once matters of mutual trust and cooperation, were now weapons in a war of attrition, each asset a battleground, each liability a trench to be defended. Yet, beneath the surface of our verbal sparring, there was an undercurrent of sorrow, a lament for what had been and what could never be again. Our words, though barbed with anger and resentment, carried the echo of a love that had once been pure, a reminder of the fragility of trust and the cost of its breach. The confrontation, though it ended in a stalemate, with no victor and no vanquished, marked a turning point. It was the moment when the facade crumbled, revealing the raw and unvarnished truth of our shared humanity. Vivian, despite her attempts to resist the inexorable tide of change, was irrevocably altered by the encounter. And I, though standing firm in my resolve, could not escape the transformative fire of the confrontation. As the crowd dispersed and the square returned to its usual state of benign indifference, the echoes of our exchange lingered in the air, a testament to the power of truth and the inevitable fall from grace that comes with its revelation. The confrontation, a moment suspended in time, was both an ending and a beginning, the closing of one chapter and the opening of another in the complex tapestry of our lives. In the aftermath of our public reckoning, the world seemed to hold its breath, awaiting the final act of a drama that had unfolded with the inevitability of Greek tragedy. The legal battlefield upon which Vivian and I found ourselves was fraught with the detritus of our shared past, each preceding a reminder of the chasm that now lay between us. The courtroom, with its austere walls and solemn air, became the crucible in which our fate as adversaries was forged. The lengthy legal battle that ensued was less about the division of assets or the enumeration of grievances than it was about seeking a semblance of justice in the wake of betrayal. For Vivian, the courtroom was familiar territory, a domain where she had wielded her intellect and charisma-like weapons. Yet, this battle was personal, the stakes far beyond the material, it was a fight for dignity, for recognition of the pain inflicted and endured. As the proceedings unfolded, each day brought with it a new challenge, a fresh wound. Witnesses took the stand, their testimonies weaving a tapestry of perspectives on the unraveling of our union. Evidence was presented, cold and impersonal, yet imbued with the weight of our shared history. The legal jargon, once alien to my ears, became the language of my new reality, each phrase a step on the path toward resolution. Despite Vivian's formidable defense, her attempts to resist the divorce, to maintain some semblance of control over the narrative of our separation, the momentum was not in her favor. The revelation of her infidelity, made public in such dramatic fashion, had tilted the scales. Yet, it was not a victory I sought, 
it was closure. A final accounting of the price paid for love misplaced and trust betrayed. The resolution, when it came, was not marked by fanfare or dramatic pronouncements. It was a quiet affair. A simple decree that severed the legal bonds that had once signified our union. The courtroom, so often a stage for our conflict, was now the setting for our parting. As the gavel fell, a sound that echoed in the hollows of my heart, the realization that it was over brought with it a flood of relief and sorrow. In the end, Vivian and I emerged from the legal labyrinth as different people, shaped by the ordeal, scarred but resilient. The resolution of our divorce was not just the end of our marriage but the beginning of our separate journeys toward healing and redemption. The battle had been fought, the scars etched into the fabric of our beings, a reminder of the cost of love and the price of its loss. As I stepped out of the courtroom and into the light of a new day, the world seemed to stretch before me, vast and uncharted. The resolution of our legal battle was a closure, yes, but also an invitation to rebuild, to find meaning in the aftermath of our shared tragedy. The path ahead was uncertain, a narrative yet to be written, but I stepped forward with the knowledge that from the ashes of our past, a new chapter awaited, forged in the crucible of pain tempered by the promise of renewal. If you leave a comment, tell us what you think about the story you heard. It's important to us and will help us find and tell stories that you find interesting. Thank you for watching us.